Hi everyone, thanks for joining me here again at the New England Wireless and Steam Museum. The video you're about to see was originally part of a very lengthy video that we filmed for Steam Up 2020 here at the museum. Steam Up is our annual fundraising event held here at the museum the first Saturday of each October. Unfortunately for 2020, we weren't able to hold it in person, but we did shoot a whole series of videos presented on YouTube. Please enjoy this segment. We hope you like and share these videos with your friends that might enjoy them. Please follow the link in the video description below to the museum's homepage for more information about everything in our collection here. Also, I hope you'll consider a donation to the museum today. You can find a link in the video description below to help us preserve and share all that we have here to future generations. Thanks again for watching. No end to the equipment here at the museum, the stuff that can be seen. I wish we had more time to, to talk about every little bit and piece here, but people are going to have to come and see it for themselves. Um, absolutely endless. You know, this entire wall arranged by manufacturer back in the day. Uh, of, of equipment. So many manufacturers were trying to do uh, basically the same things um, and kind of an evolution of, of things but you know a lot of people trying to or a lot of manufacturers all trying to do the same thing in different formats. So, so while we're at the museum a lot of people take a look at all this radio equipment that dates back to 1920 and before but very often this device right here is ignored because nobody knows what it is. So, any guesses? Um, it looks pretty streamlined. An eggplant. <laughs> uh, a very oddly shaped eggplant. As a shaft. Uh, the turns. The wires. And being what looks like aerodynamic, that's a big clue. So. The Look. first supersonic... Um, <laughs> Backwards flying something or other. Close. Uh, let's take it outside and I'll demonstrate. I'll show you what it's all about. All right. So this device is, this one fascinates me. This is an, an aircraft wing mounted radio spark gap generator. And it provides power for spark gap communication from air to ground. And in this particular case, air to ground only. So we're going to pretend this is the wing of a plane. And it can be wing mounted or eventually they mounted them on the landing gear to keep them out of the way. So what happens here is we need a propeller to turn this shaft and the airspeed of the airplane would turn, turn the generator, provide spark uh, uh, power inside for our communication, except we have no propeller. So. So why is this a separate piece, Craig? I mean, why can't they get power? Do they have some sort of other source of power? Or? Well, we need we need high voltage for uh, we need well we need the rotary spark uh, gap, which is okay. inside built in. Oh, to, you know what I'm to, thinking too. To provide with the evolution of technology, this being an evolutionary piece of technology, rather than rebuild the plane, they just stick this on the planes sure. that they already had. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. And we're talking about a very narrow slice of history here because this became obsolete very quickly. <laughs> because it was not efficient. You had to drive the plane, uh, fly the plane very fast, top speed to make this thing work. So nothing up my sleeve, but we do have a propeller. So the way this would work is, and now you can get a, a better understanding of what's happening here. If this were mounted on the wing, planes flying fast, 100 miles an hour, maybe 125, could be a single engine reconnaissance plane, and the wind speed itself would rotate this generator and power up the spark gap, rotary spark gap inside and give the pilot or co-pilot, depending on how many seats the plane had, the uh, power necessary to communicate to the ground. So you could be doing a reconnaissance mission and of course you need a Morse code key. So very often they would wear the key on their knee while they're flying and send Morse code to the ground, except one thing's missing also. You need an antenna. So it gets really cumbersome, but on the side wall, the inside of the plane, you have a, a wire reel of perhaps 300 feet of wire. And this would be paid out and the trail behind the plane. So now you have a plane flying top speed, 300 feet of wire is an antenna trailing behind it. 
<clears throat> this generator spinning, providing power for the pilot or co-pilot to send Morse code to the ground. So potentially one man, one pilot reconnaissance plane, he's flying his, you know, biplane, whatever it happens to be at the time, right? right. This person, he's, he's worried about flying the plane, keeping the plane in the air, doing recon. He's got to deploy the antenna, be sure that he's going fast enough to spin the generator at the right speed to get enough power out of it to do what he needs to do. To send important information. Keep <laughs> looking at what he's trying to do recon on, worry about all these things. He's got the antenna deployed. Keep flying the plane and send his message. And, be, and before, he, before he lands. <laughs> That's the point. Spool up the antenna before he lands. Bring the, bring the antenna in. Oh my gosh. I can understand why this might have failed in a, you know... Well, keep in mind that for a while, in this small time period, and I'm, I'm thinking less than a year, mm. because it, it became obsolete very fast, but this was transmit only. This is not a receiver. Ah. So in order to get receipt of the transmission, the pilot would have to look out the window to the ground crew, and they would... Uh, have to signal somehow that they got the message. So they would lay out uh, white strips of material with lead, lead weights in the end of them to keep them down in Morse code, which sounds really impractical and, and taking a lot of time. And Or they would actually make letters with it. But short things like K or, you know, OK or, or you know, any, uh, anything that would affirm that they, they received the message. Even like some of the, the code that you said that you were talking about in the other building for the Morse code, just abbreviations for things sure. that they had, yep. you know, standard code. And, um, but sometimes they needed to send a message up, not just receiving, not just received. So they made what's called a, a poppet box. And it's a ba basically a 15 inch by 15 inch square box that's black with a lever. And when you pull the lever, it exposes a white panel so they could go back and forth with this lever and actually send Morse code back up to the plane because the planes weren't at first equipped with receivers. So now picture all that. You're flying the plane full speed, circling around after you sent your message and reading Morse code from this poppet box uh, to see what the message is from the ground. Soon after that, Marconi installed uh, receivers, transmitters and receivers in aircraft and of course in time it became commonplace. Well they were trying to get that technology in place as quickly as they could so the technology is still sure. evolving they yeah. got it up into the plane they started this communication and then it just it got outsourced or outpaced you know the evolution of technology took over they had to just replace it all very quickly. Right. Right. Interesting that's an awful lot of work to be doing right. to fly the plane. So hopefully we'll get this on display with the propeller and it'll make a lot more sense when you see it. And I suppose if they're doing recon in some sort of, God knows, uh, you know, enemy territory or something like that, they're trying to do all this while attempting to not be shot down. Right. Ugh. Right. Hold on, let me look at the ground <laughs> to receive the message. <laughs> is there something going on down there on the ground? I gotta, I gotta look and see what it is that's going on while I try to fly the plane and avoid the enemies in the air. I'll send you the video clips of us doing that. The sound sounds crazy. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you, Greg. That's a great piece. Thanks.